Hello friends! Today we're going to answer a bunch of silly questions that you guys have asked me. This all started because of my 20 questions videos. At some point, Google Docs decided to eat my master list of questions, which I'm like... <sighs> too. I still have every script, so I still have a, like most of the questions available to me and I can reconstruct that list. But I went to Instagram and asked, hey, what questions should I add to this list? Do you guys have any? And they were like, yes, and you should answer these too. So that's what I'm going to do today. The first question comes from a fresh frippery, Vivian, who asks, if you had to hide a body, who would you ask for help? She says costumers or not, but like, I'm going to stick to costumers because I think that's funnier. The first thing I'm going to say is that I know a couple of forensic lab techs who I would call at least for a consult because like, who is going to know better about how to keep forensic data out of the hands of data specialists? than one. So I'm definitely going to call my forensic data people because they're going to help me. Who else would I call? I would probably call my friend Nicole because I feel like she has the most like esoteric knowledge and like she's always so matter of fact about things and just like can be completely unemotional about things and like at the time of I need help hiding a body, she might know about it but <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure she would have like the data that I would need to like know how to do that properly. I would also probably call my friend Natalie. I feel like she'd got this. Like there's something about her where I'm like she she she'd help. She'd know. We'd be good. Speaking of Natalie, she asks, "Who is the hottest bald man and why is it Stanley Tucci?" I don't know, Natalie. Why is it Stanley Tucci? <laughs> Erica asks, "What is your favorite smell?" It's honestly, like, I'm so basic, it's probably, like, hot apple cider. Like, it's hot apple cider and, like, tobacco smoke, like, from a pipe. Not from, like, a cigarette, but a pipe, like, a scented tobacco. Yeah. I like those tobacco candles, like, a lot. Whenever I smell them, they remind me of my grandfather, which is weird because my grandfather did smoke a pipe, but never while I was alive, and yet both me and my mom are like, yeah, that smells like grandpa. So, like, he smelled like pipe tobacco for the rest of his life, I think, and... It's very comforting to me, but also I like, I'm, I like those fall scented candles. Like I'm that girl who's just like, yeah, whenever I smell one of those. So it's always like hot apple cider. When I have parties, I make hot apple cider from scratch and kind of can't beat that smell. Which television series that was canceled would you resurrect? I feel like every television series that gets resurrected, like sucks in the re resurrection. Like, I don't know. I'm actually one of the few that thinks like Arrested Development, that auxiliary season they did. I, everyone was like, what is this? And I'm like, watch it till the end. At the end, you get what happened throughout the whole series and you're like, wow, that was actually genius. So that's probably like the only one that I've ever seen get resurrected. That was really great. If I could maintain the awesomeness of the original show in the resurrection, probably be a tie between like Gilmore Girls also, still basic, hi. Um, and Pushing Daisies. Pushing Daisies is one of my favorite shows. I loved that show. So like I was really, really pleased with the way that that show went and I would, I would love eight more seasons of that. Alurus Cosplay asks, would you rather be able to fly or breathe underwater? I am a known service dweller. <laughs> like I don't like either of those things. I think, I guess I would, I would say that if I had to pick one, I'd rather fly because at least you can like see where you're going and see attack vector like when you're underwater you are not top of the food chain anymore i took diving lessons for a while and i was like mm -mm, nope <laughs> i went through all of my oxygen for like two hours of oxygen in like 20 minutes because i was apparently hyperventilating and i didn't even know it mm -mm, stop my back keisha or sk madrano or scamandro if you're me asks if you could have any celebrity as your best friend who would it be Hands down, Keone Reeves. Hands down, no question. That man is a good man. He is a good man, and I bet you he's a very kind friend. Everyone who has any interaction with him just says, like, what a great guy he is. So, like, yeah, would I want a, like, kind gentleman as my friend? Absolutely. Many of you, like many of you, asked, what is my favorite scientific fact? Probably that lasers can get trapped in waterfalls, and, like, they can get trapped in water, and that is mind-blowing to me. It's absolutely mind-blowing because <laughs> like you'd think it would just keep going straight but no, no it doesn't. There's like all kinds of videos on the internet you can look up. They are super fun. Anyway, I just picture like 007 with the laser coming at him just like taking a bottle of water being like Neener and like pouring the water out. 
So I think that's a really fun scientific fact. And also that half of your body weight is bacteria is disgusting, but also I'm like, that's crazy. That's really crazy. <laughs> Dot Schumann asks, does cilantro taste like soap for me? Nope. No, it doesn't. I love cilantro. Ray Knits Lace asks, do potato chips belong on the side of the sandwich or in the sandwich? And I'm like, live your best life. To all of the questions that happen basically about these things and like whatever you want to do with your potato chips or any of those other things, you go for it. Like, I am down to put potato chips in my sandwich. I'm also down to put them on the side. I, I have no belongs. I'm not a potato chip gatekeeper, people. The seamstress duchess asks what is the worst common superpower i don't know i think x-ray vision is the dumbest superpower because like most people are like i get to look at people naked and like no you don't you get to look at their bones like you have x-ray vision it's not like you just get to see what up through whatever layers you want you see what an x-ray machine looks like no no <laughs> that is that is almost completely useless unless you're like trying to find people smuggling bombs on planes or you know whatever like nah. Eh. Terry for Bell asks, how would you like to be buried? Wow, that got dark. <laughs> um, I actually want, like my actual plan. So there's a difference between my answer and what, what the answer to this question is. My actual answer is that I want to be cremated. And if my, especially if my husband is alive, I would love to be cremated because I think it's somewhat better for the environment. But also, so I gave him a mission, which is to take all my ashes to all the places that we wanted to visit that I didn't get to get to because that gives him a mission to like, you know, keep going in the world and I think that's probably what he needs. However, if I have to be buried, I want to be in one of those things where like you get a tree planted right above you and you like nourish your tree for the rest of your life. Hopefully it's not a fruit tree because that would be weird to like eat carcass. I guess you're always eating carcass though. Like eh, this video has gotten real weird. Sorry. Bethany A.H. asks, what is the emoji that you hate the most? Uh, probably the clown one. I don't like that. I don't like clown. I, that clown in particular is weird. Like I don't actually hate clowns. Like if they're at the circus, I don't really go to the circus. So, but <laughs> the clown one is weird. Like I don't like it when I get it. I'm like, why? No, that's upsetting. Uh-uh. Bologna Shoes asks, what nursery rhyme explains your life? Probably the itsy bitsy little spider, <laughs> cause like climbing up the spout, rain comes down, gets back up, keeps trying. Like, yeah, that's pretty much a, a metaphor for my existence. <laughs> we had like five people ask about my socks. There's like a lot of sock interests in my life for some reason. So I will give you the skinny on my socks and we'll just answer all the questions. I have one pair of black socks. I have zero pairs of plain white socks. I don't really have plain socks. I only have socks with like fun stuff on them. I guess some socks don't have fun stuff on them. Like my husband brought me back Adobe socks because he works at Adobe. So they have like Adobe logos on them. Well, the logos of all the like programs on them. But my socks all have stuff on them. I have many socks that are mismatched. Like if I lose a sock and I have another sock that's like vaguely the same size and like could possibly go together. I just pair them and move on with my life and I wear mismatched socks a lot. I have a very good friend who is like weirdly like phobic of mismatched socks and she's like put your shoes back on like every time I have mismatched socks you can't deal with it. Anyway I don't mind. I don't care about my socks other than I would like them to be fun. I have ones that are deliberately mismatched like they came mismatched so there's a lot of sock fun in my life but I have an entire large dresser drawer full of socks because I have so many socks. Please do not send me socks. <laughs> I have too many socks. All right, Sophie Poiser says, does scone rhyme with cone or gone? And my answer is, if I'm in America, which I am right now, it, it rhymes with cone, because I will say scone. And if I'm in England, I will say scone, because I would like to communicate what I want to those people. They say it that way, so so do I. Skirts of Fire asks, if you were applying to a zombie apocalypse team, what would be your selling point? Okay, so one, I would be applying to the zombie team because I would like to be a zombie <laughs> for a variety of reasons, which I've discussed on this channel many, many times. So that's the team I would be applying to and I don't really need a selling point other than I have brains. <laughs> so that's what I would do. But if I had to become a human zombie opponent and I was applying to a team, then I would say that my skills are that I am fairly good at decision making, like I can do that pretty fast. And also, I'm very good at organizing people to do things. 
Okay, this is one of my favorite. Chiplet16 says, describe your favorite color as if you're speaking to someone who is colorblind. The only way I think you can do that is to describe it through other senses, right? Like if you can't see the color, then you would need to describe it using your other senses. So I would say it tastes like cherries, like sweet cherries. It feels very warm and comfortable and fuzzy and like velvety and comforting. I would say that it smells like how fresh fire smells, like burning leaves smell like this. And it sounds like a heartbeat. Problem Patch says, what letter of the alphabet represents you? And my snarky answer, which is the one I'm going with, is a capital B. <laughs> Sarah Urban 103 asks, do you put ketchup or mayonnaise on your fries? And my answer is neither. <laughs> I'm allergic to jarred mayonnaise. Well, actually I'm allergic to a preservative that's in most jarred mayonnaise. I can eat like aioli, but I, at this point, <laughs> I'm a no to mayonnaise-like things because of that. I also don't like cooked tomatoes, so ketchup is not my favorite thing, although the vinegar and ketchup kind of like makes it better. Uh, I do like barbecue sauce and I like ranch dressing. So those are the things that I would put on fries. Lots of what is your favorite place to travel? So that's really hard for me because I've been to all seven continents. Most people are asking what is like my most comforting place to travel and that's always going to be London. Like it is the most comforting city for me to be in because it is far away. It feels luxurious. It feels like a vacation and I can relax there but I also know the city well enough that like I can get around mostly without a map and I know my like I have a routine when I go there like I have things that we just do because that's what we like to do when we're in London and we also leave time to explore some new things and it sort of depends on what time of year we're there so it's always going to be London other favorite places I have traveled who Antarctica was crazy New Zealand is awesome Iceland was awesome Edinburgh is one of my favorite cities it's so beautiful and magical and like there's nothing like that place in the world uh, Prague, both Prague and Budapest are amazing cities and I would highly recommend. Taiwan. Taiwan is one of the coolest and most underrated places to visit you have ever thought of. It has all the awesome stuff of what's in mainland China. The people are very friendly. It's also on an island in the Pacific so it kind of feels like Hawaii. Like I, the food, the food in Taiwan is just the best. Morocco. Morocco, highly recommend. Morocco is really cool. So these are places that I think are awesome to go to and would happily go to again if I didn't have a million other places that I also want to go to. I'm still going to go back to those places though. <laughs> All right, Crouch Keshkar asks, what kind of underwear would you be <laughs> and why? Um, I'm going to go with boxer briefs. <laughs> they're supportive. They hug you. They're comfortable. They don't ride up so much. Like, yeah. I, I don't wear men's underwear or boxer briefs on the regular, but like in the limited times in which I have thought that that was silly and gave it a whirl, boxer briefs were my favorite. The person did not ask about men's underwear, but that is my answer. <laughs> Kara Baymek wants to know what my favorite noodle dish is. Pad Ki Mao. I go Asian noodle every time. I do like Italian noodles for sure, and there are many other kinds of noodles that one could like, but Pad Ki Mao, like... Or like Shanghai street noodles. Oh man. When I was in Shanghai, I was with a bunch of friends who were like basically nocturnal like me. So we would be up until like three or four in the morning and they have little carts that are running around the city at like still two or three in the morning. And if you live anywhere, like even in a residential area in the city, these carts are out and about and you can go outside at like two o'clock in the morning and get these street noodles that are just like amazing. And what I mean by that is they have this like a giant walk on a cart and they just take a bunch of noodles and dump them in and then you just point at the like topping things that you want them to oh, it's so good it's so good many people ask me if i was to be a sewing notion what sewing notion would i be i would be a pin because i like to put things together man on ham asks if you could have dinner with any person living or dead what would you eat <laughs> and my answer to that is japanese barbecue ben klein asks if aliens visited the earth how would you introduce yourself and what would you try to teach them Okay, so if I can introduce myself, I'm going to assume that they can speak language or communicate to me in some way, right? Because that is the first thing I would try to teach them is some kind of language. By the way, guys, read Hail Mary. It's a great book. 
this comes into play in that book. It is very interesting. It's by Andy Weir. He's the same guy who wrote The Martian. It's a great book. <laughs> and I'm going to say that about that because this whole conversation comes into it. Anyway, what, how would I introduce myself? I would try to be very humble and also try to like communicate that I am not a representative of my people, that I speak for myself, and that not all people are like me. And I think the thing I would try to teach them is the distrustful, self-serving, corrupt way that leaders in this world behave so that they would know to be careful about interacting with said leaders and also like how dangerous they are because of military isn't like yeah I would I'd be like these are not trustworthy individuals for you so you need to know that I'd probably start Armageddon that's probably what would happen based on me saying that maybe they would understand from me that not everybody's like that maybe they would just annihilate all the horrible leaders but then we'd have a new leadership vacuum and that would be awful also Politics majors are like weird because we can we like think about the ramifications of vacuums like political vacuums and that's not good either. See also Afghanistan. Sarah Ray is so charming. Yes, yes you are. <laughs> Ask me what is my Myers Briggs? It is very obviously an ENTJ, which is the general, the commander. <laughs> that's my zombie team like application right there. I'm an ENTJ. <laughs> you should let me run your little town. <laughs> At least three people have asked me if I could live in a painting. What painting would I want to live in? Uh, honestly, the screen. <laughs> That's how I feel most of the time right now. I'm, yeah, there's a theme going on right now. I'm a little frustrated with the planet right now, can you tell? <laughs> uh, probably it would be any Tissot painting. Is, am I saying his name right? Tissot? Yeah. The bustle dress situation going on there where ladies are just bustle dressing. I'm into that. Let's do that. That seems like a pleasant, like could I live on the back of a of a ferry crossing a harbor for the rest of my life in a beautiful bustle dress leaning over the edge casually? Yes, yes I could. Could I be lounging in the back of a rowboat while someone paddles me around a lake in a beautiful bus bustle dress? Yes, yes I could. Let's do that. Bright Kokoro asks, if you were a fabric, which one would you be? Well, 100%. Sometimes I'm a little scratchy, sometimes people are allergic to me, most of the time I'm super soft and lush. I'm very warm at all times, like I am very warm. Like menopause is not going to be kind to me. I'd probably be like a, a like, not a suiting weight, but also not a coating weight, just like a nice mid-weight wool. Pyramid Text asks, would you rather get eight hours of sleep a night or get all of your projects done? I want to lie to you. <laughs> I want to say eight hours of sleep. I am goal oriented AF. Like I would rather get all my projects done. It would make it would make those six hours of sleep significantly better for me because if I don't have my projects done, then I'm gonna spend those eight hours fitfully sleeping. I would rather get my projects done. Many people want to know about my favorite dinosaur. <laughs> I haven't really thought about this very much, but I'd probably say it's probably like a brontosaurus. The brontosaurus is just cruising around, munching. Minding its own business, being an herbivore, not attacking anybody, just chilling. I think it's like messed with a lot considering how big it is. Like every single thing is like a T-Rex runs up against a brontosaur and they're like fighting somehow. I don't even know if they were alive at the same time, honestly. So like, <laughs> leave the brontosaur alone. Just let it hang. Many people also want to know about my preference for pineapple on pizza. Yes, yes, I like pineapple on pizza. I very frequently get a bacon pepperoni pineapple pizza and I am super happy with it and anyone who wants to judge me about that can judge me about that. Cookie Vaughn Sandwich! This is the best name ever! I love it! That is an awesome name. Cookie wants to know what is your favorite compliment to receive? <laughs> I actually am super awkward about it. I don't like receiving compliments. I get them a lot because I have a YouTube channel and an Instagram account in which I do some activism and stuff so like people send me compliments all the time and I'm like uh, thanks. <laughs> like, I I would rather have compliments than not have compliments, honestly, like in my deep soul, but also I have no idea how to respond to them, so I've, I've just, like, I have a canned answer now that was like, thank you, that was very kind of you. Um, because <laughs> I just don't know how to react, I get all weird and whatever, so. Mm. I think the thing that actually makes me the happiest when people tell me is, like, 
you're a good person. Like that is my favorite compliment to receive, I think, because that's all I'm ever trying to do. Like, it's nice when people compliment my clothes that I've made that I'm trying to make really well and people are like, oh, that's cool. It looks really awesome, blah, blah, blah. Like that makes you feel really good about the thing you made. But like my favorite compliment to receive is probably like, you're doing good. Keep going. <laughs> like you're a good person. You have managed to like not harm a billion people, you know, like things are okay with you. I enjoy your content. <laughs> That is actually my favorite compliment and that's the one that people most of the time give me so that that one is great so thank you thank you to everyone who says those things it's very kind and i appreciate it and i'm also like in my house like smiling but also like <laughs> what happens tc rodak 13 i don't know how to say your name asks what musical jingle from a commercial do you remember from your childhood i have so much data storage that is filled up with childhood jingles from the television if you want a new truck, go see Cal. If you want a new car, go see Cal. If you want a new truck and you want to save a buck, go see Cal, go see Cal, go see Cal. Or like, you want a Shasta, you want a taste pizzazz, all a great taste Shasta has. All TV commercials from when I was little. <laughs> all of them. I know every theme song from the Gummy Bears and Punky Brewster and like every, <laughs> like, I can't remember what I had for lunch yesterday, <laughs> but I remember all of that at the drop of a hat. We'll be sitting in a car and there'll be some song which I consider like a tolerable song to hear but I don't listen to it. It's not a track I ever had. I never bought that CD or whatever and it can be from as long ago as the 80s up till now and I will just sit there and I will know every word of the song and I'll just be like why do I know the words of these songs? I have never voluntarily played these songs in my own presence. <laughs> I don't know. Jingle songs that kind of like musical information. I think it's also partially because I was in band for so long like musical information information that comes into my life through music actually I retain significantly better so sometimes when I was in high school and I needed to remember stuff because uh, I was an AP IB and I would have like a million tests so I would like write jingles <laughs> about things so that I could remember it all for the tests. Miss Allstitch asks do you fly in your dreams and if so how? So I think you're asking me to describe the way in which my flight happens because you could fly in a number of different ways. So yes, I can fly very frequently in my dreams. I think my best description of it is Storm-like. So Storm, Storm is a comic book character that is right here actually, drawn by Jim Lee. Um, sometimes she rises up and is like, Wah. and sometimes she flies like head first flying. I sort of do understand the whole arm forward thing or like two arms forward because it creates like a cone of drag for you so that you can breathe. I have done skydiving before and the thing that they don't really tell you is for that, the free fall part, you can't breathe. <laughs> like you can if you put something over your face, but if you don't, if you just go out the plane, like I, I couldn't breathe the entire time and everybody I was with said they couldn't breathe either. The air is rushing past you so fast, you can't really sip it off very easily. I think it's a thing you have to like learn how to do. So I guess if I could fly in reality, I would learn how to sip. But like, I think the reason people put their hands forward is because it creates like that drag cone that like lets you have a little bit of slowed down air that you can actually breathe. That was a complete aside. Anyway, <laughs> sometimes I go straight up and I hover and, and then I will lean forward and go forward. I have a friend who flies feet first and that doesn't seem like the way. Blueberry Dolphin wants to know what mythical creature I would be. Dragon, hands down. Like, but I would be a nice dragon, like maybe a luck dragon, like the never ending story or Puff the magic dragon, just like a friendly dragon, not a smog like dragon. Dollhood1315 wants to know what is my favorite onomatopoeia and it is Howl. I love Howl. It's great. I mean, I like Squish. That's a great one, too. That I mean, monopias are really fun, but Howl, for sure. Okay, I'm gonna do a little rapid fire of silly questions, because there are some silly ones. I'm gonna read some of these. Would an elephant wear a mustache on the end of its trunk or on the tip of its lips? On the tip of its lips, because a mustache is on your lips, and an elephant's trunk is its nose, and you don't wear your mustache on your nose. Would a giraffe wear a necktie under its chin or on the top of its shoulders? I would say on the top of its shoulders, because that just sort of looks better, I think. Uh, I mean, I guess up the top would be okay, because it makes him look a little dapper, but I think on the top of its shoulders. 
is butt, leg, or back. I'm gonna go with leg because it is below the like, or it's at or below where the socket joint of your leg attaches. So I just think of all of that as your leg. I can see the argument for both. I think leg. In a zombie apocalypse, what is your weapon of choice? Machete, hands down. What three things would you bring to a desert island? I would bring a like flint situation. So like it'd start a fire, I would bring a tent and I would bring a machete. What is the weirdest thing in your bag right now? I don't carry a bag. <laughs> I carry a little wallet situation, like a little pouch. Just is big enough for my credit cards and a little bit of cash and that's it. That's all I carry. I never have a handbag. Is cereal soup? Sure, if you want it to be, absolutely. If you don't want it to be, that's also fine. Nachos or fries? Fries. How do you eat your mac and cheese? With great fervor and delight. To eat or drink soup? Both. You eat soup and drink it? It's a multi-textured thing that you can consume in any way that you want. Alright guys, that's it for my silly questions. I will be adding these to the 20 questions list if and when I film more of those. I do have actually a series of seven of them that I think I have left that I've had around forever that I really just need to edit and put out. I might do like a week of fun where I just put out one every day for a week and let those exist in the world and that will help out the people who those are about. So I feel kind of bad because I hang on to them until I like need something to put out but I've held on to these all summer. So <laughs> it's time for me to do that. So there's some chance I will just push out a bunch of them all at once. There should also be one that I just released with Lauren of Dresses and Capes. She is the cutest human that has ever existed. Actually, I know so many cute people, but she's great. She's great, so go watch that video. I'll link it up here for you and down below. Anyway, I hope you guys are having a great day. If you want to, go down below and answer your favorite one of the questions for me so I get to know you guys a little bit better. And leave me comments letting me know what you guys are up to. And a like if you like this video. Subscribe if you haven't, and I'll see you next time. Bye, guys!